Well, Lisa here. Welcome to Walking the Self-Worth Path, a series where I share with you my favorite tarot and witchy tools, techniques, and rituals to support your journey to an empowered life. When it comes to self-care, I have made no secret of the fact that one of my go-to self-care practices is a bath. So I'm going to share with you today what I do to create an environment where I can have a ritual bath. Now for me, a ritual bath is like a step above a regular bath. Like I can just draw myself a bubble bath and that is awesome self care. But a ritual bath is when I really take the time to set up an environment to pull in supportive tools, herbs, and other sort of energies to create an environment that feels entirely focused on truly celebrating myself and creating an environment where I can feel really soothed and comforted. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the things that I use to create a ritual bath environment. And I'm also going to be sharing with you how you can make your own ritual bath sachet and use it in a ritual bath. But I'm going to be sharing with you a whole bunch of goodies. So I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to take a peek at that. Okay, so for myself, if I am planning a ritual bath, there are a few major components that I, or sort of boxes, I guess, that I want to check off. So I want to create an environment that feels very ritualized, that feels very full of intent and mindful. So I always incorporate some kind of scent-based product. So <laughs> most of the time, I'm going to pull in a favorite incense. Now, this is actually an incense holder that lives in my bathroom. This is great because it's handy. I keep it up on a shelf alongside my incense and it's great because all the ashes stay contained and I actually save my ashes in a jar to use in rituals and things. But this has a hole on either side and it does have, if you look, a couple little um, places to do cone incense, which I very rarely use. So I actually forgot mine even had any cone incense holders in it. But these are great. Now, I typically will put the incense in, get it going, and then I will close this. Um, but do be aware that at least on mine, depending on how the incense sits, you can see I've got a lot of blackening along the top. So you do want to be careful. Make sure that, you know, you're watching your incense if you're using it this way. But I just like seeing how the incense kind of comes out in little tendrils of smoke out the top. Um, I'm not very fussy about what kind of incense I use for different purposes. In fact, and this is like a terrible, like this one is kind of like... It's seen a lot of use, so it's sort of like not kneading properly, but it does get a lot of love. Anyway, so for incense, I will usually just grab randomly something from my incense jar. So I have a bunch of incense, but I always keep this pretty full. And this is where you'll even see the little um, ties, because whenever I get incense from a witch's roots box or anything like that, I will pop it in here bundled together. Um, that just helps because if I find one that I really like, I know that there's others like it with it. Um, but normally I actually just blind reach in and pull out a single incense stick. And this jar I got from the dollar store. And so on a shelf in my bathroom, I just have these two things sitting next to each other. So it's really easy to grab one and set up for my ritual bath. So I'll always pull in a bit of incense. Something else I'll always do is set up some candles, usually more than one because I love having a candlelit bathroom and I like to turn off the overhead light and just like have a bath by candlelight when I'm having a ritual bath. Some of my favorite candles to use are things like this. So this is actually a Himalayan pink salt holder. Um, now this, you don't want to get wet, so you want to be careful, but I usually set things up like on the counters and things or on the edge of the tub where they're not going to get too damp. Also, jarred candles are really great to use. I like this one because it's very heavy. I don't have to worry about it like moving around a lot and it keeps the flame. Um, the actual tea light that goes in here is actually pretty deep. Oops, it's actually pretty deep in there. Um, so again, I don't have to fuss or worry that things are gonna tip over or I'm gonna have any issues like that while I'm in the bath because that would be distracting and problematic for a whole bunch of ways. The other neat thing about this is that with tea lights, you can actually um, anoint your tea lights with oils and with herbs and charge them for a specific intention and then put them in your holder and add to your ritual bath that way, which is a really great way to sort of, again, amp up the mindfulness and the intention of a ritual bath. So I love doing that. I also like to incorporate crystals. Now I will put crystals right straight up in the bath water as long as they're water safe. So always check that first. I'm gonna show you the big kahuna. So this bad boy, is a giant cluster amethyst. So Peggy and I were doing a road trip years ago and we stumbled into this little shop um, on the way to Whistler in BC. And 
we ended up negotiating this piece for something ridiculous like 20 25 dollars it had just been sitting there collecting dust now this usually lives up on our mantle because peggy loves this crystal we argue about whose it is but like it's basically hers at this point <laughs> but i will grab this and put it on the side of the tub or I will drop it right in the water. Now, obviously, depending on the size of your tub, you have to be careful. If I put this in the water, I will actually put it on top of a, um, a towel or a washcloth so that it won't scratch the bottom of the tub. But there's something about the energy of having a big honking crystal like this in the bath with you that just makes it feel really super magical. And stones often look really neat in the water, so that's another fun thing. It's kind of like a little chunk of an amethyst, <clears throat> excuse me, it's like a little chunk of an amethyst crystal cave. So I love that um, about this piece. But so I'll just toss that <laughs> in or by the tub, which is amazing can we just like look at it for a while longer it's so pretty i love this piece um and it's held its color really well because amethyst can actually fade like look at how huge okay anyways put it away lisa we're done playing for now now i do have some smaller pieces um that i'll play with with um today with what we're doing i have a couple of these i think these are called shark's tooth um amethyst uh, little mini wands these came in um witch's moon boxes this one's great because it has two little points on it. Um, so these are great. Now I like amethyst for putting in the bath because I know it's not like water soluble. Be careful with selenite. Selenite totally dissolves in water. Um, but I just love incorporating lavender. I think it's a great way to connect with the spirit element and with guides and things like that. So since I'm often doing some sort of meditation work in ritual baths, I often like stones that help me connect with the crown chakra or the third eye chakra and amethyst is great for that. Lastly, I love to pull in a uh, special magical bath salt and I like to make bath salt tea bags and toss those in my bath. Now this particular blend is, it's actually in a, it was a tiramisu jar, but this particular blend I made for myself, I think I talked about it in a favorites video, but um, I crafted this during a working to specifically work on some shadow work that I wanted to do. And this particular blend is for that. So this actually lives in the tub and I have a larger jar of it and I just refill this. Um, but, oh my God, it smells amazing. Um, and it smells like my ritual baths because I use this particular blend a lot. Um, but you can easily make a ritual bath salt. We're gonna do one together here, but you can easily make one using whatever herbs and oils and things like that that you want to incorporate. And I am a huge fan of making ritual bath tea bags or bath sachets, partly because I love having herb energies and salts and things like that in the tub, but I don't like all the little floating bits of herbs and plants or flower petals or whatever that can stick to you. Like it's pretty to look at, but it's like a terrible sensory experience for me personally. So I love making bath teas essentially. So we're gonna make one of those together today. So first off, I've got my cauldron here just to mix things in. Um, these are the bags that I tend to use for bath teas and these are fantastic and you can reuse them again and again and again and again. Um, I get these in uh, subscription boxes a lot of the time so I'll save them. Now I have a couple bigger ones that are my favorites like this one. I have an even bigger one actually also but this is about the right size for me for a ritual bath tea but you could also use these and you could even do a few of them if you wanted more scent in your bath. Um, but this one's exactly like the right size for most of my baths and I've used this a bunch. In fact, you can probably still see, like I'll dry it out. What I'll do is after I've used it in the bath, I'll usually just flip it upside down. I'm going to get some herbs on my table, but that's fine. And I'll poke the corners out once it's dried, right? I'll flip it upside down. I'll poke the corners out and I will, whatever herbs or plant material in there, they just get composted or they get sprinkled into the house plants or whatever just to kind of help them break down but there's usually like once they've dried it's super easy to just like clean this out so this is the one we're going to use today now you could also if you have a bunch of these you could work color magic into it by picking a color of pouch um to use you can use other kinds of pouches too you can use clean like basic cotton pouches or linen pouches i like these because i can see the herbs and i can see the salt is dissolving and that's something we're going to talk about because the basis for me for a bath tea is always going to be epsom salts epsom salts are just great for your skin look you can tell like we use the crap out of these so i'm just going to use whatever's left in here to make our sachet today um but epsom salt and you can also use sea salt and i like to do a blend when i make bath salts but i don't have any sea salt right now so i'm just going to top finish up these um epsom salts and i'm just going to mix in my cauldron because it just feels more special when i make bath salts in my cauldron 
So uh, that's Epsom salt. And these are great because they soften the bath water. Um, it's also really nice to do a little bit of Epsom salt in your bath and then add bubble bath, like do like half your tub or whatever. And then the water's really soft and then add your bubbles and you'll get amazing bubbles. <laughs> just, just pro bubble bath tip from you, for you from a pro bubble bather, which is, which is me. I am a pro, a pro bubble bather. I've, I've taken a lot of bubble baths. I have done lots of bubble bath experiments. <laughs> Anyways, so I like to start with um, Epsom salt. And if I'm making a blend for somebody else, I will typically do Epsom salt and sea salt in a blend. I just think it's nicer, but um, you really don't need the sea salt. I just like the aspect of having sea salt in the tub. So yeah, Epsom salts are great. So that's that. And then I like to incorporate herbs. So my favorite herbs, whoa for ritual baths are lavender, which is just one of my favorite herbs in general. Um, I'm just gonna use this little shark's tooth. These, this lavender was originally mashed into this jar, so it's like in this compacted lump. As, I, as I've started to work through it, I've been able to start to break up the lump, but I'm just breaking that up so I can easily sprinkle it into the jar. Now I'm gonna be, let's see, we've got quite a bit of salt, but I don't think we're going to be in too bad of a shape here. I'm going to be pretty generous with lavender because I love it. Um, and I like to just kind of crush it between my fingers as I'm adding it to my bath salt. I feel like it helps to release some of the natural oils in the dried plant. It could just be in my head. I don't know. I'm not a professional. <laughs> um, but it just, to me, they get more fragrant and I feel like that's what it's doing. So generous amount of lavender buds. And my other favorite herb to add into ritual bath is mugwort. Um, now for starters, lavender is really calming, which is great if you plan to do any meditation work. Um, and mugwort to me is like one of those herbs that's like amazing for any kind of transportive work, for any kind of like um, astral travel work or connecting to spirit. I just think it's really good at that. Um, now I have a few different types of mugwort in this jar because I actually got some really wonderful hand harvested mugwort from a friend online and she sent it to me all the way from the Netherlands and I love it but when I've gotten other mugwort in boxes I've kind of put it on top so the really good mugwort is like here you can tell and then the like uh, more common mugwort is sitting on top so I'm just going to use some of that more common stuff I'm not going to go digging too much and that's some mugwort. The yeah, mugwort um, is just one of my favorite herbs in general. I just keep it in a old tea tin. This is a jasmine creme brulee, which by the way, this tea was amazing. It was so good. Um, I really should buy some again someday, but anyway. So that's it, herbs and salts. And the last thing I like to do with my oils, or excuse me, with, well, I just spoiled it, uh, with my bath salt is I like to add some of my oils. Now I get these wonderful magical anointing oils in my witch's roots box or in my witch's bounty box. And these are fantastic. So I've grabbed a calm oil here and a gentle guide oil, which is really great if you're planning to actually connect with any guides or do any sort of astral travel work. These are such a great combo. Literally, I feel like the calm oil is like adding with the lavender adds and the gentle guide oil is kind of how I see mugwort. So these are just a great little combo. Um, I haven't actually smelled them to see how they're gonna smell together, but let's see. Okay. So the calm oil has a little bit of a sweet, soft scent. And if I remember correctly, the gentle guide is similar. So I think these will actually blend really well. Yeah, this one's a little bit sweeter, I feel like, but they're both going to be good. So I'm going to do this. I don't want to get oil on my cloth. So I'm going to be careful. And I'm just going to hold the whole jar over. And I usually only add, oh, you know, I guess that was like a tablespoon. I don't know. I'm not very good with this stuff. And I like to just wipe the bottle and put excess on my skin because I love these oils on my skin um, but it keeps the bottle cleaner and let's do the same thing with gentle guide and these are great because they also have botanicals in them so if some of the botanicals come out that's just fine with me same thing here I'm just gonna like wipe the lip and put it on the back of my hand I'm gonna rub that in in a second okay so let me rub my oils all over my skin and that'll also give me a great feel for what they're gonna smell like together it's great better than hand cream okay Oh, they'll smell nice together. They smell really nice together. So that was a good choice. And just like before, I'm going to take my shark's tooth um, lavender point here for stirring. Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and stir clockwise because I'm not banishing anything. And what I'm mostly going to focus on is breaking up the bath salt where they came into contact with the oil because they do tend to clump when they get moist. Um, and just stir everything together. 
Now, I don't necessarily recommend doing this with your lavender um, in a cast iron because it might damage the crystal. Some of you are probably like, what are you doing? But I love adding the energy and I'm trying not to be too too harsh with it or too scrapey. I mean, like mostly what I'm doing here is just gently stirring and kind of like folding. Now, something else you can do once you've mixed your herbs or even while you're mixing your herbs is to really focus on your intention for this particular bath, right? What is it that you're hoping to do? Now, in my case, I'm making a blend that's going to be for some journey work and I'm just kind of focusing. I just went counterclockwise, but that's okay. It's what happens when you're distracted <laughs> making a video. But I'm just focusing on a supportive blend, something that's going to make me feel safe and it's going to help me to connect with the spirit realm. Perfect. So I'm just going to, so again, some of you are probably cringing, but kind of fun to use things like this to add extra energy when you're making your stuff. So that is actually a lot of bath salt. And I don't know if I'm going to fit it all in here, but we are going to give it the good old college try. I feel like I need a scooper. Well, well we can just, we can just pour. This is going to be a disaster. Do you guys feel it like, like happening? I'm going to get a scooper. I'll be right back. There. So I grabbed a um, quarter cup measuring cup because it had the little pointed Oh good, I picked good. Um, so we're gonna use that to pack my little tea bag here. Oh yeah, this will be fun. I always worry that I've made too much, but I like a lot of salt in my bath, which is probably why I've used up so many Epsom salts. So I've probably made about a cup of this mixture. Don't spill it all over my table. And fill this guy up. The cool thing, I don't know if I mentioned it already, I may have, but the cool thing about making an Epsom salt mix like this is that when you have your bath, you toss this into your bath water like a tea, and the salts dissolve into the water, so it looks like you've got this big bag of stuff, and when you're done, all you'll have left is the um, herbs, because the salt itself will stay, will, will dissolve into your bath. Okay, I think that's about all I'm going to get out of here. One last little bit. So when I'm done, I like to just pull it tight. I love these little double pull sachets for this. And then I just tie one little half, what do you call that, a half knot on one side. And then I go to the other side and I do the same thing. That just makes it so it's probably not going to come undone, but it's also really easy to get undone. So that is what a ritual bath sachet or bath tea looks like in my world um, and you can play with this so many different ways you can add a little bit of essential oil you don't have to add oil blends like I did like you don't have to add these kinds of things you can just add some essential oils you can um, add whatever herbs are speaking to you you can get as complicated or as simple as you like with this um, what I'll also do if I don't want to put my crystals right in the bath is I'll actually put um, like if you're not using big enough crystals, like these are big, I don't have to worry about these going down the drain or anything, but if you wanted to add crystal energy and you want the energy in the bath, but you don't want to lose track of your crystals, or you just want to make sure that um, they don't go down the drain, you can actually put them in this sachet pouch. So you can put in like a rose quartz or some lavender or whatever it is you want to add. Just make sure you look up in um, on the internet or wherever trusted resource you can find, look up whether the crystal you want to add to your bath tea is um, safe to be in water. And there's a lot of resources that tell you that now because crystal water to drink became a thing for a while. I don't know if that's still a thing. Um, so you can actually look up and find which crystals are good to put into the crystal charged water. And that also is a great way to find out. But check two or three sources. Make sure that you're comfortable before you put your crystals in your water. Because number one, they can leach things into the water if they do dissolve or are soluble in some way. And it may be stuff that's not great for you. <laughs> Um, and just two, it can hurt your crystals, which you don't necessarily want to do. So I've always had good luck with rose quartz and amethyst. So those are go-tos. Clear quartz has also worked really well for me in the past. Smoky quartz has worked well for me in the past. Um, there's a few others that I'll grab for, but in general, just make sure you check. I'm just really satisfied with how this looks. I just want to keep playing with it. <laughs> and th this organza, if you can look, I've got a very little tiny bit of like fine dust, but very little. It actually tends to hold everything in really well. And then it goes in the bath and it just it just dissolves all the salt into the water. It's amazing. So I will make use of this later on this weekend. Um, when I'm filming this, it's the weekend. But I'll make use of this a little later on this weekend. But it smells amazing. Yeah, it smells amazing. I'm really, really happy with it. So that is how you do a ritual bath sachet. And in general, how you can set up a ritual bath for yourself. And I just think it's a wonderful thing to do. Now, something to point out about these two. If you do not have a bathtub, these are really wonderful 
to hang off of your shower head. So sometimes what I'll do, depending on how your shower head's set up, you might be able to fit the loops over your shower head. If it's a bigger shower head, sometimes you can take these and tie them either over your shower head, or you can even do these over um, into a bowl of hot water and do a facial steam. That can be a really nice way to use these and bring the energy in. You can put them into a tub and soak your feet. Um, that's a really great way to do self care with these, but there's lots of ways to use them. Even if you don't, if you aren't a bath person, you don't need to use them as a bath tool. Uh, but yeah, that is what I do. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. Definitely click like on this video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below. Is this something that you do already that you would consider trying? Um, what herbs would you put in your ritual bath sachet if you were to make one? I'd be super curious to hear because I don't always think of new combos. I don't know about you guys, but I can get stuck in a rut and like always want to use the same stuff. Um, so super curious to hear what you would put in yours. And subscribe if you're new here. That way you'll see my videos in your subscription feed. Click the little bell to be notified of my future videos. And remember, if you want to book a reading with me, you can always do that over at supportivetarot.com. Thank you so, so much. And may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye, guys.